So when you make a confidence interval, you need, a Z, you need your z-score. Here's how you get it. Let's consider the normal distribution. Now, let's say I want to find a 98% confidence interval. Where does 98% fall in this graph? Which 98% which of it are we talking about? What's the total area under here? One. The total area under the normal distribution is always 1. So we can convert 98 to a decimal, 0.98. It's the area in the middle. The middle 98%. But the Z table doesn't tell you the middle 98%. It tells you the area to the left of a number. So we got the red part, the blue part, and the green part, and the total is 1. And this graph is symmetric. This is negative z. This is positive z. What is the area of the red part? Well, the total is 1, so 1 minus 0.98 is 0 0.02. But that's in the red part and the blue part put together. You've got to divide by 2. So the tails, each of them has an area of 0 0.01. OK, so if you know the area of a section of your graph, what do you do? Remember section 5.3? Z table. The thing is, we're using it backwards. We're looking for numbers close to Point zero one zero zero. As it happens, we don't find that exact number. We do find, well, what did you find? I found point zero zero nine nine and point zero one zero. Oh, Point zero one zero oh two. Which one's closer? This one's closer to point zero one. And what is the associated z score? Yep. Z equals negative two point three three. So this z here, negative 2.33. And this one is positive 2.33. So we're going to use the positive value. In the last chapter, it was really important whether your z was positive or negative. Now, you're going to be adding and subtracting it anyway, so it kind of doesn't matter. Okay, 
This is how you find a z-score for any particular level of confidence. Here's a trick. On the negative side of your z-table, down in the corner, some of the zc's are given to you. There's a little chart, looks something like this. They tell you that for a 90% confidence interval, you can use 1.645. For a 95, use 1.96. And for a 99, use 2.575. These are the most common levels of confidence. 90%, 95%, and 99%. Now, why do people pick a particular level of confidence? Why 95%? That's actually the most common one. Well, if I'm going to predict the weather, I want to be able to make predictions which are both reliable and specific enough to be useful. Like, I could give weather predictions that are reliable all the time. I predict that next July 4th, the high temperature for the day will be at Newark Airport will be somewhere between 40 degrees and 120 degrees. Am I right? Of course I am. Is this useful? No, that prediction isn't useful at all. So, when you make a prediction or when you make a statement about a population, confidence intervals are all about making statements about things you don't know exactly. You don't know the true mean weight of men. All you have is a sample mean. You might not know the true mean score on a test or the true mean weight of deer in South Mountain Reservation this year. So if you go for a really high confidence level, your statement is very likely to be accurate. But it could be less specific. It could be vague. As you go towards a lower level of confidence, you can say things which are more specific. But you might be wrong. Anytime you say something that isn't completely obvious, there's a chance that you might be wrong. I think that tomorrow the temperature will get over 80 degrees. That's a specific thing to say. I might be wrong. So depending on your circumstances, you choose one of these. Occasionally people use numbers less than 90, but it doesn't happen very often because 
It's just the risk of being wrong is too high. We call this the balance between precision and certainty. So what if I want to be both precise and certain? Hmm. I guess you need a pretty good experiment to make that happen. <laughs>